gathering evidence. So let's think about what materials you need to gather to show that positive change is happening. These materials and information are often called evidence. This presentation and the group discussion afterwards will help you to consider what information would be useful to gather. There are lots of different ways to gather evidence, and these are called methods. We'll look at some of the different methods in this presentation, but please also see our methods fact sheet in module three for more information. Okay, so let's think firstly about quantitative evidence. Quantitative evidence is anything that can be counted or measured. For example, you may keep a spreadsheet or a database where you can record the number of people who attended your sessions or the number of sessions you delivered. If, for example, you were supporting people to access benefits, you could count how many people you helped to make successful benefit claims or the amount of money that you managed to help them access. This kind of evidence is all about numbers. So let's think about qualitative evidence. Qualitative evidence is descriptive, expressed in words and language rather than numbers. For example, written feedback from questionnaires. A questionnaire enables people to reply to you individually and anonymously. Feedback from one-to-one -one interviews or chats. People tend to say more in an interview than they would write in a questionnaire. And this can also help with anyone who has literacy issues or who isn't confident in writing. The write-up of a focus group discussion. In a group setting, people can respond to comments from other group members, which could stimulate more discussion. And lastly, a case study. This is when you work with an individual or a group of people to tell the story of how they benefited from your work, showing how people were at the beginning, what you did and how that helped people. It can also be useful to set a baseline. This means that you ask people certain questions before they start using your service, using whatever method you choose, and then you ask them the same questions after they've been using your service to see if what you're doing has made a positive change. So now that you've collected all of this evidence, what do you do with it all? Firstly, bring all the evidence together. For quantitative evidence, pick out the useful numbers and statistics. For qualitative, sort what people said into broad themes and pick out any useful quotes. It's a good idea to write everything up and to keep a record of all your evidence. But you may also want to edit it down into a summary document, which could be used either internally by your own group or externally for the people who use your service and for partners and funders. If you do write a report, it's often a good idea to include quotes and photos, but make sure that you've got permission to use these first. So how does gathering all of this evidence help? It helps you to know whether your work is being effective and is having the positive impact that you want, and it makes sure that what you're doing reflects the needs of your community. It can also help you with future planning and with making changes and improving future projects and activities. It improves the targeting of your work to those who most need it. Taking the time to carry out evaluation activities supports deeper reflection during and or at the end of a project about its overall impact. Very importantly, you can use all of this evidence when you report to funders or when you're making funding applications as it demonstrates to partners and funders the value of your work. Now, look at your outcomes and your indicators. For each outcome and indicator, discuss the information that you will need to gather and how you're going to gather it. Add all the details into your monitoring and evaluation plan.